Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Here I am uh, to present our paper on effective audience extension in online advertising. I am present. I am Santanu Kole. I am presenting on behalf of my colleagues at Turn, uh, Shen, Sahin, and Ali. As part of this presentation, I am going to briefly introduce uh, the landscape of online advertising, and then I am going to talk about what is the problem of audience extension and why people want to use it. Then I'm going to talk about, uh, define the problem more formally and our approach to solve the problem. And then I'm going to present a couple of results and some conclusion. Okay, so what's on online advertising? It's a very large market uh, in billions of dollars. Uh, it's ubiquitous, everybody is relying on online advertising to uh, make money for the site. So how does it start? So here we have an user on the right, uh, which we call audience, who wants to, uh, who is browsing a page, say CNN.com, and CNN.com needs to show an ad. So there, uh, so they ask for an ad to ad exchange, and there are many such ad exchanges. So now the ad exchange is going to uh, pass that ad to multiple demand side platforms, call them DSPs. So this demand side platform is the core decision engine in this uh, ecosystem. So what it does is advertisers come to this platform that's on the left, and they are going to set up a bunch of constraints and a bunch of ads that says which ads can be shown for which type of user and which type of context. And once the decision engine matches these, uh, uh, matches these pairs, it produces a bid that comes with a bid value and then it gets to the ad exchange, and once the second price auction uh, is uh, determined, uh, whoever wins that ad particularly gets shown. So Turn is one such demand side platform. And here when I talked about constraints, so we are only going to focus on hard targeting constraints. There could be other soft constraints. Uh, and here uh, it's getting cut off a little bit, but basically these constraints are defined in terms of uh, user profile data and uh, to basically determine whether that particular uh, instance of the bid is matching that user. Now, what's user profile? Uh, Turn, as a, a demand side platform, uh, contains a lot of data about, uh, has a large pool of user IDs or cookie IDs. Again, these are nothing but data where the key is in cookie ID, and the values are a bunch of categorical data labels. By the way, none of this the information is PII or personally identifiable. Uh, so these are all anonymized data. And advertisers can use this data to target the right audience to optimize their campaign. And normally the data can come from two sources. Uh, sometimes it is first party data or advertiser private data where it could have data like uh, their own CRM data or purchase data or homepage visit data and that kind of data. And the large part of the data, though, comes from other sources, like third-party match partners or data providers that provide the data specializing in uh, demographic, uh, credit score, uh, travel intention, or credit card purchase intention, and things like that. So here you could see an example where uh, we have different profiles. They have different categorical levels. And this is how, these are the building blocks of the audience targeting. So advertisers basically want to reach the most appropriate set of users for their use case. Say, for example, I'm an advertiser trying to sell a minivan, and that marketer or whoever is setting that campaign, they think that they can reach this target audience by setting users constrained between age 26 and 30 and users who are also parents of infant. So this intersection in that Venn diagram is the targeted audience. But sometimes the, odd, and normally the targeting constant is a set of propositional logic and or logics using a combination of data uh, categories that I talked about. However, sometimes the segment that you find can be very small, say it's a million user. And that's not enough, they want to reach 10 million users. And that's where the problem of, uh, that's where the solution for uh, audience extension comes into play. And this is where our platform is helping the advertisers with uh, solving the problem. So first case is predictive targeting. When we say predictive targeting, we are saying we know about a certain set of users, and the idea assumption is 
if users have similar user profiles, they are going to behave similarly. So if I've seen some people click on certain uh, ads for minivans, maybe people who have similar profile but haven't clicked yet, they are likely to click. And audience extension is, idea of the audience extension is to find this kind of set of users. Another problem that we often run into is data sparsity. And remember, these match partners or the third party providers are giving us data and they're using fuzzy matching technologies to find this. So not even though there could be uh, millions of people who has marking like a young pa uh, parents of infant, they are not necessarily all marked. So, and also there could be multiple data providers who are marking the same user in different ways. One could say it's a parent of infant, Another data provider can say uh, family, uh, people with families or young children. And they happen to be different categorical levels and there is no taxonomy to match them really. But they could be understood by looking at the user data. So this is why the data sparsity, uh, this is the data sparsity problem. So again, the requirement is you start from a seed set of users and provide interpretable description of novel audience. And here the focus is interpretable. Uh, the main reason is that there, are, there could be other ways of figuring this. So you could potentially treat it as a classification problem, uh, say fit a logistic regression model on the clickers and take some negative examples and fit that. However, they will end up with a very complex uh, definition of the segment and it's not understood by the marketer easily. Another main contribution here we did was basically enable the advertisers to customize the extension parameters on demand. And I will say also what it means by that. So here is an example, like uh, some Venn diagrams for the extension. So as you can see, some are obviously good and some are bad. So the second one is good where you started with a seed set, small seed set, and you are able to cover the whole using the new extension algorithm. So this is new. You maintain the same, assuming this is the going to maintain your click-through rate and all the other good quality metric that you have. And then majority of the cases you will end up with a reasonable extension depending on how the intersections and the overlap is working. And this is where uh, our contribution is. Here we define the problem more formally. So you start with the audience segment S, which is a propositional logic consisting of uh, category information. And then we propose a new segment, uh, S prime, consisting of uh, uh, M other uh, categories, such that there are three criteria that are met. So first is the similarity. You definitely want these segments to be similar because if they're too deviate too much, you end up with a completely different targeting criteria. So similarity has to be greater than certain threshold. Second one is performance and uh, or quality measure. And this could be multiple of them. I'm going to go later what they are. But idea is the new segment performance and the old segment performance should be bounded. The difference between them should be bounded. And the third is obviously you want the segment to be larger than what you started with. Otherwise, no point doing that. And the main problem that we ran into is we need to do this very fast. In a sense, this is used as a tool for when marketer is setting up the campaign. And that means they are in an explore mode. So you quick, so we have a web UI where people are continuously playing with this criteria and see how to optimize the campaign. So these results has to come back uh, within a few uh, seconds, one second maybe. And we want to give this control to the users because they are the boss defining how they want the audience segmentation to work audience extension to work. And the challenges were mainly the computational challenges and how to maintain the multiple optimization goals and making sure that it is human readable. So as part of this work, because of the human readable nature, we have uh, kept it uh, into logical or combinations. So the categories are or combinations. So we had a couple of approaches. The previous, uh, we had, th by the way, this is uh, already part, was part of the platform. We were already providing this. This work is just extension on top of that. Uh, initially, we had a purely greedy approach. Idea is very simple. It is just a pure set cover on the original segment. So think of it, user segments are nothing but a bunch of categories. You are trying to find the set of categories that optimally covers the set and choose the minimum of them. And a uh, grid algorithm goes like this. So collect all the categories uh, in that user pool or the cookie pool, uh, sort them by, co -occur by occurrence frequency, and then you start choosing from the top of that list, sorted list, one by one, till you reach a certain size that you care about. Obviously, this logic does not always 
work because there could be lots of correlated categories. So you could keep on adding categories without making the logic very complex, using the rule set very complex without gaining more segment because you don't have novelty criteria considered uh, in that equation. Second problem is going to be your performance criteria because it has no, con no knowledge about how it is going to perform. So you may end up with a large audience, but your CTR or click-through rate or other kind of metric can go down. So we try to tackle this problem. So in our approach, we've, uh, we talked about three metrics, right? Similarity metric, uh, novelty metric, and quality metric. So here is how we're formally defining it. So the similarity metric is uh, going to be the, uh, like a jacquard index. It's the similar in the intersection of the two sets divided by the audience size, original audience size. The novelty metric is uh, how different the two sets are. So this is, again, a version of the intersection divided by the new segment that you create. And one minus of that, that controls the difference, the novelty part of it. And the third is quality metric. And again, this quality metric is chosen by the advertiser. So it could be CTR or click-through rate, uh, CVR or conversion rate or action rate, some people call it, and ROI. ROI is like a effective cost per click, which is a ratio of the two numbers. And we let users choose uh, the weighted combination of it. And this captures the extra return. The weighted combination is a score that captures the return from the combination of the three. So here, uh, one such formula we have used is a log combination of the theta parameters. And theta parameters are given by the users. And we use log because some of the, uh, for numerical stability because sometimes the probabilities are very, very small. So let's see how uh, uh, we are focusing on two parameters here, how these two parameters can control the, some of the Venn diagram that I showed before. As you can see, where you focus on too much similarity, you probably end up with no extension, obviously. And there is a balance between the two. And as you can see, if you put focus on uh, similarity and novelty in different degree, you end up with a good or bad uh, extension parameters. And this is where the explore method that I was talking about or stressing on from usability point of view really brings a lot of value to the users because they can figure out exactly how they want to play these theta parameters that satisfies their need. Here, I'm going to talk about the implementation quickly. And we're talking about large amount of data. We have billions of user profile and probably in tens of terabytes of data. So a lot of this data has to be extracted offline. And we use uh, Hadoop. Uh, Pig is a higher level language on top of Hadoop. And we formulate it as a MapReduce problem. Uh, you go over, uh, you basically aggregate three types of information. And the three types are you want to go segment, Given a segment, find the number of users and some quality info that helps you to compute the CTR. The second is, um, second is the category level. So these are, uh, again, the category and quality info of the users. And the third is the segment category combination. And that's where the pairwise combination of information is captured. And now we can cache this data in our uh, online serving system and bring that like in a NoSQL database and bring that within, sec uh, within milliseconds and then basically compute and return the result to the user. We ran into some data issues. So obviously, this is an n-squared algorithm. Uh, but it is still a practical algorithm. Uh, so what we do is we remove users and categories who are useless for us. And as you can see, this is a power law distribution. Again, the x-axis is logarithmic. Uh, sorry, the y-axis is logarithmic. And users who have too much data or too little data, they are not useful. Categories that have very high I mean, too much users are above in that. There is not much information or categories that are very rare is not going to help you to find. So once you do that, we can able to, we can bring down the computation pretty significantly. Finally, I'm going to just present two experiments we did. So this is done over 15 days of real uh, user-based data. We chose four different segments of different sizes. So that gives you a flavor of the variety of the segments that you have. These are real production, actually real advertiser. These are not made up segments. And we're comparing four different audience extension algorithms. Uh, the, uh, the main is the manual, which is human generated in a sense that we ask some people with the background knowledge to come up with extension by themselves. And then there is greedy, and then the weighted. And here is the, uh, one of the experimental results where we show 
uh, how it can recover the audience. So this is 100 theta parameters, full focus on the similarity. What we did was we took a set of users, we sampled 50,000 users from them, found the top categories, K categories, and we remove half of them. It's like, think of it like a holdout set kind of problem. So remove half of them and see if I can recover the other half of the categories uh, by that. So here we can show that this is recovers, this algorithm recovers things pretty quickly, pretty nicely. All of them are one. Second experiment is on uh, click-through rate. Again, it's 0, 0, 001. And as you can see, the click-through rates, we have been able to maintain the click-through rate with a large audience extension. So this really helps the users. Finally, to conclude, uh, here we presented a, a fast performing customizable weighted audience extension algorithm. And by the way, this is one of the first works that we could find on systematically exploring the audience extension. This is also called lookalike modeling in marketing sciences, but we didn't find too much of literature published on that work. We have some future work. Uh, partly, obviously, we are doing uh, all type of segments. We would like to explore and or, or more complex Boolean logic at the cost of higher, uh, but we've got to figure out because it could give us better result. And the second one I could, we could think about is, this is a item-based collaborative filtering approach where categories are items. Uh, potentially, we could explore user-based collaborative filtering, and you can think of uh, diverse type of collaborative filtering like uh, topic modeling on the user, clustering, or matrix factorization, all those can be done. However, the problem is that our advertisers don't like to share data across each other. So there are some privacy concerns so that we have to work against. But our hope is together with item and user, we are going to get better scalability in terms of performance. And thank you for your attention. So now I can take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Santano. We have a, a time only for one question. A uh, very interesting presentation, in fact, showing yeah. where data science can work well with business. Yeah. yeah. Can you, yeah, I couldn't hear. Can you explain a bit more the model you used uh, to go between data to your conversion probability or click-through rate, and what factors were predictors you put in your model? So this is actual, uh, so, so basically we have some existing algorithm uh, that actually determines the click probabilities in our bidding flow. So we use the same model. That model is a version of logistic regression model. And we have a published work for that two years ago we published in KDD. Uh, so, uh, and that one, and we have the, for the past data, we have the real user click-through probabilities, right? We have seen some data for the user. But for the new users we haven't seen, we are using the model to predict the click-through probability, using the features that we have for that user at that point. Thanks, Santana. All right. Thanks again.